One of the most frequently asked questions I get on this channel is how to edit HDR real estate photos. So in this video, I'm gonna provide an overview of not just one, but three of my favorite methods to edit your photos. Before we dive in guys, I just wanna say a big thank you to the 4% of you that are subscribed to this channel. And that means for the other 96% of you who aren't subscribed, if you feel like you're getting value, I'd really appreciate a sub. It's free to do and it helps the channel immensely. Now let's get right into it. So first of all, if you've never heard of HDR before, it's a photography technique where we capture multiple images at different exposure values. The brighter exposures help us show interiors while the darker exposures capture details out the windows where it tends to be much brighter. Now when you unload your SD card, depending on how many brackets you shot, you're gonna see three to seven images of each angle. And these are the raw materials that we'll be using to craft a single polished image to deliver to our client. But then why do we need three different methods to achieve the same result? Well, there's a maxim in business that goes, good, fast, or cheap, pick two. Now, if we plot these on a Venn diagram, and let's just replace the word good with quality, then we can consider each of these three methods as tools for a different unique scenario. Let's just say you're a new photographer, you're still paying off your equipment, so you don't wanna spend money on outsourcing, but the client does want these photos back ASAP. In the cheap and fast category, I'd suggest using Adobe Lightroom Classic, which has an auto HDR merge feature. Now the diehard Lightroom users might be fuming at their keyboard saying, Hey, we can still get quality results with Lightroom. And I agree, but it ends up taking a lot more time tweaking with masks, etc. Now, if you want high quality and cheap, then you can just edit your own photos using a combination of Adobe Lightroom Classic and Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop has more precise masking tools that not only allow us to control how the image blends, but also we get more refined selections for areas like the windows. Currently, I'd say this is the gold standard for high-end editing, but as with any manual process, there is a learning curve so getting consistent results will take time and practice. In our final category, we have quality and fast. So for this instance, we'll pay a contractor to edit our photos. And the good editors are almost always working with the Photoshop method. Now, many of these editors live in Asia. So as a US-based photographer, you're sending these files out before you go to bed, and then they're finishing by the time you wake up in the morning. This option makes the most sense for those whose businesses are growing because it gives you the ability to buy back your time and take on more shoots. So now that we've covered the why, let's get into the how for each method, starting with Lightroom. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up Adobe Lightroom Classic on our desktop. I also have Adobe Lightroom, the Creative Cloud version, but this you need to use Classic and I'll show you why. Once we're in Lightroom, you can use the shortcut Command-Shift-I. That's gonna open up our import screen here. I'm gonna go to the folder that contains the raw brackets and make sure they're all selected. They will be by default. And then go ahead and import those into Lightroom. Going over to the develop tab, we will see now that we have all of our brackets down here. If you had, let's say like 125 images or something uh, from a standard photo shoot, one of the best ways to sort them is by going down to the bar here, using command A to select everything and then right clicking and you wanna go to stacking and then you wanna go auto stack by capture time. 10 seconds usually gives me a good result. So I'll go ahead and hit stack. And now it's taken all those images and grouped them together, stacked them. All right, so once we have our brackets stacked, there's two ways to do this. The first way is just the fast and dirty way. You can hit control A to select all the stacks here and then hit control on a Mac, control H. And it's just gonna add, you see in the background here, photo merge operations without giving you the prompt on deghosting and all that stuff. If we wanted to get that prompt, then you have to do it one bracket at a time, you'd select it. And you could also do this by going here to photo merge by just right clicking, go to photo merge and then HDR. And again, that'll also give you this HDR merge preview screen. Deghosting basically goes in and finds anything that might be moving in the frame and then corrects that. For this, I don't really see anything here, but we can go ahead and put it on medium and then merge that bracket as well. All right, so now that the merging has been done, let's go ahead and compare what this looks like if I just go into stacking and unstack this. Compared to our original image, you can see that here, kind of in that middle exposure, those windows are pretty blown out. So it's brought those in a lot. Let's go ahead and check for this other image. If I unstack this, then we can go ahead and see how this image has changed. So really blown out here and it's managed to 
to tame that and bring it all in. So let's start from the beginning with the editing process. I'm gonna go ahead and go into basic. The first thing usually with these HDR images is that the white balance can be corrected. So if you use the eyedropper, you can go in and try to find something that is white or gray. Actually that time it did a pretty good job, but sometimes you might have to sample around. Now we can somewhat adjust the exposure by again, sliding the shadows and the highlights. So I'd actually like to bring the interior up by using the shadows. And then I wanna bring those highlights down even more, although it's kind of limited with what we can do here. So we're gonna go into masking. So in Lightroom, you can make selections using objects, the brush, these two types of gradients or color ranges. And let's just go over some of these different options. So for example, if I wanted to use the linear gradient, cause this is kind of a broad strokes, easy way we can do this. I could use that gradient and bring the exposure down. Now it's gonna affect the whole image, not super ideal, but let's just say we use that as a starting point and then we subtract with the brush and we just wanna bring back these white areas. So you could brush them away, expand the brush size using the right bracket. You could click up here and then you could use shift and hold and just to go broad strokes. So it's not the most precise, but this is one way we could do it. So another way you could do it, let's go ahead and just delete this mask here and then add a new one. We could go the opposite way and just actually brush in the different windows and you can see here if I hold shift, I can just brush those edges around really quickly. So this might be the opposite way and just for brevity's sake, let's go ahead and bring that exposure down. And again, you could see the same change basically happens. You could add more selections to that mask if you wanted to keep going with it. One of the things that tends to happen is the interior white balance and the exterior are gonna be a little off. Obviously the exterior is exposed in daylight and the interior might be using some other kind of interior lighting uh, temperature. So if that looks off, then once you've masked your windows, you can also play around with the temperature. Depending on how you like your, your windows to look, you can either darken them, make them look really crispy, or you could brighten them up and, and leave them kind of washed out. It really just depends on your preference. Similar thing here, if we go over to our HDR of the interior of this room, you know, we could start with the white balance correction. I'm just gonna do a quick exposure bump because this is pretty dark. Maybe we wanna add some masks here too. So maybe we wanna use a linear gradient. It looks like from this side of the room, you're getting nice bright window light, but maybe we just wanna brighten this side of the room up just because it's kind of dark dark behind the bed there. So I could increase the exposure. And again, if you want to toggle how that looks on and off. And of course I could pull in the windows using that same masking technique I showed you over here. But this is the bread and butter of Lightroom editing, making those changes with your masks and playing with the sliders. Now let's move on to Photoshop. We're actually gonna start here in the same program, Adobe Lightroom Classic. You don't actually have to just grab the whole stack. For the most part, we're blending three brackets. And these other ones are kind of safety images, just in case we had an extreme lighting situation, we wanna make sure we capture that detail. Otherwise, we can basically work with the dark and we're looking at the windows here. This is gonna be our middle exposure. I might brighten that up a bit. And then this would be like our bright. So this would fill in any shadow, dark areas. We wanna change the white balance before we go into Photoshop. So if I hit shift here, select all three of these and then turn on auto sync. Then when I change the white balance, it'll be consistent across all three images. And then one last thing we want to do before going into Photoshop, make sure to select all three images that we'll be working with. So hit shift and then auto sync turns back on and we'll go to lens corrections and enable those profile corrections. That's because once we're in Lightroom, the metadata for those is gonna be gone. So it's not gonna automatically detect which lens we used. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I got all three of these selected. I'm gonna right click and go to edit in open as layers in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and we have our three layers, our dark came in on top, our middle exposure, and then our bright exposure. Now, what we're gonna do is go ahead and hide that top exposure. That's gonna be for our windows. We're gonna go to our middle exposure, click on channels, hit command and click on RGB. That's gonna draw this selection. We're gonna feather this selection to smooth it out. So I use 150 pixels and that's going to smooth the selection out. And then we're gonna go ahead and come back to the layers and hit mask. And so basically what that did, if you could see black conceals in masking, white reveals. And so it took some of those areas that were darker and it concealed them. So like this chair and uh, some of these windowsills and it's concealing them with a gray mask. You can see it kind of over here where my mouse cursor is hovering. The areas from underneath are actually coming through and brightening it up. This is how we can control the blend of our image. If I wanted to go in 
down here, Command Shift A to open up Camera Raw. And let's say I just wanted to turn that brightness down a little bit, then I could adjust the blend, which can't be done in Lightroom. Let's just go ahead and leave that for now, and we're gonna move on to the windows. With the windows, we can hit P to use the pen tool. And the pen tool is great because when we have curved objects, let's go ahead and start just with this window, and I'll zoom in a little bit. As you're moving with the pen tool, it's drawing these paths, but once you hit a curved area, you're gonna wanna use the, cur the Bezier curve feature of the pen tool. So once you draw out a point, it's gonna be straight. You click on it and you hold the mouse and drag, and it's gonna make this curvature along the line there. You're gonna to go to option, uh, that lets you drag the handle back to make another straight line. And then you can just keep going around, drawing that curve. If I don't use option to drag that curve back, it's gonna give me the other end of it, it's gonna be curved. That might be okay for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that there. Uh, and then I wanna make sure that I'm following the window here. So let's go ahead and do that. Curve around there. And this is how we're gonna mask our windows. You could see you can get a lot more precise than the way that we can do it in Lightroom. Once you click on the endpoint, it's gonna close that path. And so I'm gonna just quickly run through the rest of these. Okay, so now that I've finished those window selections, these are actually just paths, the blue lines. So I'm gonna hit Command, Shift, Enter. That's gonna turn them into selections with the marching ants now. And then we're gonna hit Shift, F6 to feather the selection. We're gonna feather it just by one pixel. That'll kind of smooth out the edges. So now all I have to do is with this layer selected, I'm gonna click on the mask. And just like that, we've masked it out at a very precise level. Now, something else I'm noticing with this image is that these areas are kind of bright and then they go dark. And so honestly, if I just turn off the blend here let's see what changes really helps with this area and then some of the areas down below kind of get a little bit washed out maybe the lampshade so what we can do here is make sure that we're on black I'm going to increase the brush size quite a bit and then I'm going to click on the mask to make sure I'm painting over that and then I'm just going to paint over and you can see where the black is going onto the mask here and I'm just painting over especially these white columns in the center here and as I get to the floor Maybe it's kind of gonna start blowing it out and even that lampshade. But let's go ahead and just paint this entire thing black here. Now, if I wanna bring back in some areas, for example, let's go ahead and just click on the swatch and use like a gray swatch. So that way, if I paint gray, it's gonna bring back not as much as if I had used white, but it's gonna bring back some kind of percentage of this. So let's go ahead and bring that. Now, watch if I used white and I concealed it. That's gonna be a really strong you know, it's gonna reveal a lot of that. So it's gonna be really dark. That's why it's pretty cool to use these uh, other shades of gray because then we can just subtly bring back areas that we want. I wanna darken this floor just a little bit like that. So this is one of the reasons that Photoshop excels because again, we can fine tune the mask, fine tune the blend by using these different tools. Also, if I wanna change the window, I can use Command Shift A to open up Camera Raw Filter. And for this case, I want to bring the exposure down. I like my window views really crispy, especially if there's a ocean view, but let's just say you prefer them a little bit blown out. You could do that too. Bringing the exposure down and then increasing the saturation a bit. And like I said, the white balance, you might wanna correct it a little bit. I think we already did that, but let's just warm it up just a hair. Let's see how that looks. So that's the essential HDR blending technique that we'll use in Photoshop. I do have tutorials in the course that go step by step, showing you things like how to desaturate color casts, how to do some more advanced toning. But basically once we're done in Photoshop, after maybe doing a couple of those additional steps, we can hit Command W, save that image, and then go back to Lightroom where it'll be saved as a TIFF. And now that the image is back in Lightroom, we could do our transform, taking care of the verticals, the horizontals. We could add a finishing preset. We could apply sharpening. There's a lot of different things that we can do to enhance the image. So that's kind of the process for taking it from Photoshop, bringing it back into Lightroom. And again, I go over all this stuff step-by-step step in my tutorials in the course. So check those out if you wanna see how that's done. Outsourcing photo edits is really simple. Since we're paying for each photo to be edited though, the first step is to go through all the shots and only pick the best ones to send off. Personally, I like to copy all the photos over from my memory card, and then I create a new folder and name it discard. Then I sort through and keep only the best photos from each shoot. But rather than deleting the unused photos, I'll just keep them in the discard file 
in case the client asks for an angle or a feature that might have been left out. Finding photo editors is also not very difficult. If you search on Google, there will be at least a dozen reputable big name companies like Box Brownie, for instance, that you can start off with. The big companies usually have teams of staff, so they're consistent with turnaround times, but the quality varies depending on who edited your photos. If you wanna find a smaller team or work with an individual freelancer, many of these editors are active in Facebook groups. You can just search real estate photo editing, post in that group, and then say RIP to your inbox because generally you're gonna get dozens of responses. So that wraps up this overview of editing HDR photos. And if you wanna dive deeper into any of these photo editing methods, I currently have 11 step-by-step -step tutorials on HDR editing in the course at fulltimerep.com. These are part of the paid course because a lot of work goes into their production, but I'm confident that they'll be clear and easy to follow for people at any skill level. And of course, if you're enjoying this free content, then please consider subscribing and allowing notifications so you don't miss any new videos. But that's it for this one. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.